Hey, what's up YouTube? Short video today to explain a simple yet cool technique to add natural motion to an equirectangular sky texture. This is a bit of an old school technique though. Nowadays it's all about procedural skies, volumetric clouds and physically rendered atmosphere, right? So this technique may not be that relevant anymore, but still. Even on today's AAA productions, where artistic control is of utmost importance, good old sky textures are still heavily used and adding natural looking motion to those sky textures can be a bit tricky. Now Naughty Dog shared a cool technique at GDC a couple of years ago. I wasn't aware of it until very recently and I thought it was kinda cool and worth sharing. Again, it might not be that useful anymore nowadays, but who knows. Now feel free to watch that GDC talk, it's great, but honestly it's almost 30 minutes long and in the end, all it says from a technical point of view is the following. First, use a sky dome to project an equirectangular sky texture. This is one I downloaded from this website. Then convert a planar wind vector to tangent space to create a flow vector all around the sky dome. Finally, use a good old flow map technique with that flow vector and voila. You get this natural looking motion because that flow vector mimics vanishing points and thus you get a sense of perspective and distance and so on. And there's not much more to it really. Now this technique obviously suffers from a few limitations, because in the end it's just a flow map, so the range of motion is kinda limited in a way, and the repetition can be quite visible. It loops on and on, right? But more importantly, there's a big issue at the pole. Oops. Now that can be somewhat easily fixed in many many different ways. Personally, I added a second UV map to my sky dome mesh using a simple unwrap, nothing fancy. Then I centered it at 0, 0 in UE's coordinate system, so on that corner. In the shader, I then use the length of the UV coordinates stored in that second UV map to create a mask. And I used that mask to lure a texture projected using that second UV map as well, at the pole. And voila, fixed. You may then add an extra flow map or noise to that flow vector to further add artistic control, localized wind and so on. You may even duplicate the sky dome, maybe scale it down in Z, then use a transparent material with an equi-rectangular cloud texture and a faster flow speed to create a second cloud layer at a lower altitude and add a bit of depth to the picture. Again, equi-rectangular sky textures are not that common anymore, but they are still used every now and then. It's super duper cheap and you have full artistic control over the entire sky, and that in itself is often quite valuable. That's it for today's video, thanks for watching, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Take care of yourself, bye bye!